if everybody could uh, start turning on their video, uh, we've got about 45 seconds here. So we'll, that way we can get rolling right at 4.30. Be respectful of everyone's time. <clears throat> Chair Wyda, if we can hold for one minute, minute, we're having a technical issue on the. Absolutely, Mike. No big deal. Just uh, give me the thumbs up when you're ready to go. All right, Chair Weigel, it looks like we are good to go on the site. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. So that being said, looks like our technical issue has been solved. So with that, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order of the regularly scheduled meeting of the Design Review Board and remind everybody why we're here uh, in this virtual setting. Pursuant to Government Code Section 45953E, and the recommendation of the Health Officer of the County of Sonoma, Design Review Board members will be participating in this meeting, in this meeting via Zoom webinar. Members of the public can participate virtually by navigating to www.zoom.us slash join, or by making a toll-free phone call to 877-853-5257, and for both of those options, using the meeting ID 8171176-1047. Public access to the meeting is through the Zoom platform. You can provide comments during public comment periods by raising your hand. Additional information related to the meeting and its and participation is available at the city's website at srcity.org slash design review board. The meeting is being live streamed on the city's website at santa-rosa.legistar.com slash calendar. Click on the in progress link to view the meeting. The meeting can also be viewed on Comcast channel 28 and the city's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash city of Santa Rosa. Recording secretary, may I please have a roll call? Yes, thank you. Let the record reflect that all board members are present with the exception of vice chair Hedgepin. Cool. Thank you, Michelle. Um, it looks like we don't have any minutes to approve, so we'll move on to item number three, which is public comment. This is a time where we, uh, anyone, a member of the public may address matters not listed on the agenda, but are within the subject matter of and purview of the Design Review Board. Um, so at this time, I will turn it over to the recording secretary, and she will acknowledge if you have raised your hand in a Zoom platform, and then you will have three minutes to speak. Okay, I am not seeing any hands raised at this time. All right, not seeing any hands raised at this time for public comment. We will close public comment and we'll bring it back to the agenda, which is item number four, board business. And uh, item 4.1 is the statement of purpose. This is where we uh, read the section of the zoning code defining what the, uh, the design review board's uh, project review authority is within the city. Zoning code chapter 20-52030F, project review. The review authority shall consider the location, design, site plan configuration, and the overall effect of the proposed project upon surrounding properties and the city in general. Reviews shall be conducted by comparing the proposed project to the general plan, any applicable specific plan, applicable zoning code standards and requirements, consistency of the project within the city's design guidelines, architectural criteria for special areas and other applicable city requirements, e.g. city policy statements and development plans. 
We'll now move to board member reports. Uh, does anybody have a board member report this evening? All right, not seeing any. Uh, we're actually go to item 4.3 other and actually tonight we have uh, on the agenda a vice chair election. Uh, so the mayor recently appoint reappointed uh, chairs for all the different boards. And so that gives us the opportunity to do a vice chair election. And so uh, I'm looking for nominations uh, from the floor for a new vice chair of design review board. I would like to nominate my esteemed colleague, uh, Michael Birch for vice chair, please. Cool. And uh, so Michael, do you accept the nomination? Y yes, I do. And thank you, uh, board member Sharon. I accept the, the nomination uh, with a heavy heart and a real sense of uh, honor and responsibility um, tonight. Thanks, Michael. So we also need a second to uh, board member Sharon's uh, motion there. Can I see a second for the nomination of board member Birch to the position of vice chair? I'll second that. Thanks, board member Wolski. So uh, having a nomination, uh, an acceptance of the nomination and a second, we now uh, move to discussion. On this item, does anybody have any items of discussion uh, for the nomination of board member Birch to the position of vice chair? Cool, seeing none, <laughs> uh, let's just go to the, uh, let's just go to a roll call vote here. Uh, so I'll turn it back over to the recording secretary for a vote. Great, thank you so much. Um, board member Birch. I, I do vote for myself. Is that how this works? Yes. Okay. Aye. Board member McHugh. Aye. Um, board member Sharon. Aye. Board member Stapp. Aye. Board member Wolski. Aye. And Chair Whitehall. Aye. Okay. And that passes with six eyes with current Vice Chair Hedgepit being absent. Thank you, Recording Secretary. So um, just uh, I just want to preface or uh, end this. Uh, so it is not that we are trying to uh, replace uh, board member Hedgepath in any way, shape, or form. And I think with Michael's comment about a heavy heart, it's that um, Warren uh, has continued to have health problems. And so in an effort to help our board run more efficiently, uh, we discussed that uh, it would be uh, prudent to uh, elect a new vice chair in, in, in the interim here. Um, hopefully, maybe he'll, he'll start to, to turn a corner and feel better, but um, in order for us to conduct business in an efficient manner, should I, I not be present at a meeting, it's important to have a vice chair that's available. Uh, and, and Michael has been chair of this board in the past, and he seemed like a, an easy slot in, given our current uh, situation with uh, with unfor unfortunately with Warren's uh, poor health. So I, I so if anybody ever just have Warren in your thoughts, hopefully um, you know he'll he'll feel your your good thoughts, good vibrations, whatever, um, and, and with what's going on with him. Uh, so with that, I, I think we'll go straight. Does anybody have anything else, Michael? Did you want to add anything to that or? No, happy to happy to jump in, um, and uh, I feel ready to go. We need to jump in and share a meeting. <clears throat> I am uh, I'm going to miss a couple meetings in a row here due to some other public hearings in other cities. But after that, I'm <laughs> I'm on board. So thank you. Thanks, and and actually, you know, funny enough, in a, in a more light uh, tone, I, I'm actually going to miss a couple of meetings here in the next month or two due to my uh, daughter's softball schedule. So it it just kind of I think works out that we're uh, we're doing this right now because uh, uh, her 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 uh, unfortunately or fortunately she has a couple of games on Thursday nights. So <laughs> that's just the way it is. Um, so we'll go to department reports now, and we'll go to liaison Amy Nicholson. Thank you, Chair, and good afternoon. Um, I'll thank you for um, making those comments about um, former Vice Chair Hedgepath. We certainly um, will miss having him in that role, but congratulations to you, Vice Chair Birch. We're excited to have you um, fulfill that. So um, I don't have any department reports this evening for you. Cool. Thanks, Amy. I appreciate that. 
Um, uh, item number six, statements of abstention. Uh, are there any statements of abstention on the two scheduled items for this evening, 8.1 and 8.2? I apologize, my children are getting home from school. And of course, with that comes kind of a general sense of mayhem and destruction in our house, uh, as, as anyone who has children may know. So tell I, I apologize. Her, tell her no, no softball in the house. <laughs> exactly. At least no on softball Thursdays. Yeah, exactly. No softball in the house. All right. Uh, so seeing no abstentions on the schedule items, uh, we'll move to item seven, which has no items on it. Uh, and so that will go to item eight for scheduled items. And we'll go to item 8.1, uh, which is a concept design review for West Coast Self Storage, Santa Rosa number two, 2875 Sebastopol Road, DR 21 068. And I believe we will be turning it over to the project planner, Adam Ross for a staff presentation. Thank you, Chair Weigel, uh, members of the, design, of the Design Review Board. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the presentation right now. Uh, while Planner Ross does that, we did wanna let you know, Chair Weigel, we're having some issues in chamber with minutes. So if we're a little slow on the draw, that's why. And uh, nothing that'll stop the meeting, but I uh, just want to give you that heads up. And also to remind all the board members, if you're not currently speaking, to make sure to mute yourself after you're done speaking. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. And uh, no worries on the technical difficulties. I think um, we're in an age uh, that we, we all seem to be having those problems in meetings. That, you know, I have client meetings all the time, and it's like, hey, you're still on mute. <laughs> or hey, we can't hear you, your speaker's not working. So I I, I certainly can uh, uh, sympathize with those sorts of issues and problems that we tend to have with technology as of late. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Yeah, we appreciate um, it. We're working with IT right now. It's a potential network outage at City Hall campus, but we'll get it taken care of. And it won't stall the meeting, the, the encoder's still working. All right, cool. Thanks, Mike, we appreciate you. Um, so I guess we'll turn it over to Planner Ross. Um, and I guess, Mike, uh, I'll try to take, uh, uh, you know, like I always do, I'll, I'll take notes uh, with, with a lot of the comments. And, and if you guys need me to kind of summarize that and pop an email off to Michelle or yourself at the end of the meeting, I I'm more than happy to do that uh, if that'll help as well. Yes, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so we'll turn it over to Adam for a staff presentation. Great, thank you. Uh, so this is West Coast Self Storage, uh, Santa Rosa's number two. This is their second proposal in the city. This is the concept design review um, uh, review uh, uh, review for the project. Uh, the site is located at two eight seven five Sebastopol Road. So the this is for a self storage facility. Um, it's a three story structure. There's 628 self storage units. Uh, it's approximately 62,000 square feet total um, with a, an approximate 20,300 square foot uh, building footprint. Um, the required entitlements for this due to its location in the zoning district uh, is just design review with the design review board. So it'll come back to the board uh, at a later date um, for the formal major design review. So here's the site uh, currently, as you can see, it's it's partially paved. Um, maybe there was something there previously, staff hasn't gone into that deep of a dive at this point, but it's currently a vacant site. Uh, to the left um, of the screen is a multifamily residential use uh, zoning district, I should say, uh, surrounded by commercial and uh, office uses uh, along Sebastopol Road. So the general plan land use designation is light industry. Uh, the zoning is light industrial. And here's a better representation of what's surrounding the site. So we have low density residential to the north um, with a light industrial. So this is actually a uh, zoning designation is light industrial um, and then medium density and then uh, business park. Uh, correction is across the street is business park uh, zoning district. That's typically for office uses and, and 
commercial uses supporting uh, office, um, uh, larger office, um, and uh, and other small types of business kind of uh, campuses. So here's a site plan of the site. Uh, Here's this, the site plan. So here's Sebastopol Road on the right. Um, sorry, so here's Sebastopol Road. Here, there's an entrance from Sebastopol Road and exit onto uh, Britain Lane. I think it's pr pronounced Britain. It might be pronounced Britain, but there are two T's. So um, there's parking on the, uh, so if I'm looking at this, uh, to the left is north. So on the east side of the parking uh, of the site plan, you, you have parking supporting the use. Two of the parking spaces are um, considered uh, um, uh, loading bays for larger trucks for any individuals that, that they need, that they see fit. You have uh, landscaping setbacks that comply with the zoning code standards, um, both on the Britain Lane side and the Sebastopol Road frontage. And the office for the uh, use is uh, facing Sebastopol Road. It is uh, secured via a uh, mechanical gate, which would require codes. I'll let the applicants kind of go into a bit more with that with their presentation as well. Um, and the uh, project has already been reviewed with FIRE and has been agreed upon that it can be properly conditioned to comply with FIRE access uh, requirements. So here's some elevations for your review. I'll let the applicant team kind of go a bit more into it uh, with their presentation. Some more elevations. And some 3D renderings. And then uh, the conceptual uh, landscape plan. Uh, as you can see, it is somewhat um, robust in the landscaping surrounding the site, uh, which is a requirement by, uh, you know, specific to uh, self-storage units. As part of uh, the public noticing, no comments have been received uh, as part of this, this project, or this uh, concept design review, I should say, because it is, under CEQA, it is not a project. Um, so it's a general, it doesn't meet the definition of a project under 15378 for CEQA, and it is a uh, common sense uh, uh, exemption, or not exemption, a common sense that it would just not have an impact on the uh, environment. Now, it will be analyzed under CEQA for the, for the uh, major design review portion of the project. So with that, the recommendation um, is a the applicant and the planning and economic development department are requesting that the design review board provide comments and direction for the West Coast self storage Santa Rosa number two project that completes staff's presentation. I do have the applicant's presentation to share uh, as well as soon as you uh, would like. Thanks, Adam. I, I'd love to go straight to the applicant presentation um, and then we'll do kind of our, our public comment component after that. And then I'll turn it back to the board for questions and comments. So if we could just go straight to the applicant presentation, that'd be great. Sure. Um, Coming right up. Yeah. Um, and so uh, uh, Mike and Michelle, if you guys could work on uh, getting the applicant team uh, their speaking privileges, that would be fantastic. So if the applicants on this project could raise your hands, um, and uh, our illustrious uh, recording secretary and tech support will will get you hooked up and ready to go to speak. All right, Robin and Steve, we've given you permission to speak if you want to. It looks like you're already unmuted, so you can just start um, speaking when you're ready. All right, this is, hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, great. So this is Robin Murphy, Jackson, Maine Architecture. Uh, I, I'll kind of go through briefly. Adam did a pretty comprehensive uh, review, so I'm not going to go over things that he already discussed about neighborhood zoning. Um, if we, if Adam, if you could move the head in the slides here, um, I want to get to a floor plan or a site plan, if possible. Uh, one more. Uh, one thing you'll notice here that's this 
3D model view. Uh, it shows rel it shows flat roofs at the two corners. The one the prior design we had that we submitted uh, to the city had sloped roofs. We uh, su um, subsequent to that submittal, we we decided they just weren't working and didn't feel like they fit the building massing. So we've turned them into tower elements with flat roofs. And I, I think it's more successful, but we'd look forward to your input on that. This view really shows comprehensively um, what's going on in the more complex part of the site. Uh, uh, Adam mentioned the security fence. That fence yeah, isolates the loading area. Yeah, right there. Uh, and there's another one correspondingly on the north west corner that isolates a fire lane and and what that does is it it for, for that piece of the building is uh, is after hours is closed off uh, but it's primarily shut most of the time it would be operable to to tenants uh, who have a security code to get in and use the loading bay or use the perimeter loading areas but most of it is tucked away from the street on purpose uh, so that it isn't facing the street and we try to organize the tower elements so that they're focused on the street corners and on the office and that office is what we're looking at right there uh, we use uh, transparency at the corners to kind of offset some of the opaqueness of the rest of the building uh, we don't feel it's appropriate to try to make these buildings look like office buildings or multifamily apartments uh, they are storage buildings, and we and we want them to 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 explain that to the in their street presence through the through the transparency at the corners. Uh, we're using a few durable uh, materials, metal siding primarily, and masonry at the base, um, and it's it's used uh, without trying to be too busy about it. We use three or four different color material combinations and, and use them throughout the building. Uh, there's generous landscaping along Sebastopol, which you see here. And Adam, if, I think there's a plan coming up here that I'd like to mention. Yeah, so this plan, I just wanted to point out that it's hard to read that's pixelated here, but on the right, which is parallel to Sebastopol, we have a 43-foot a wide dedication that we are obligated to provide to uh, to expand Sebastopol, which we are doing, and and the civil engineer is on this call, and she can talk about that uh, at, at length if you la if you're interested. Uh, then on top of that, because of our proximity to the multifamily zone, the R318 uh, across Bretain, we have a 25 foot eight setback from the um, from the back of the curb, which is essentially accommodates a sidewalk and a 20, uh, a 20 foot setback on top of that. So that's the landscaped area we just saw in the view before. And, you know, I guess you can see the, in this view, uh, the fire lane wrapping around the building. Uh, it's, you know, it's compact. At one point we had two buildings that we were um, considering for this project, the, the the single story building being on the top of this view, which is on the east, and then the three story building where it is located here. Uh, when we determined through some due diligence with the planner uh, that we needed to provide this 20 foot building setback along Sebastopol, we, we consolidated this into one building and we feel this is a more successful solution, uh, keeping the keeping it to one single multi-story building. Let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, here's just a view showing the inner workings of the building with the office and the elevators and the and the internal circulation. This is conceptual, but you know most of this is internal. Shows you how the loading works. We've checked the um, the maneuvering and and the accessible stall and the um, another visitor stall are outside of the security gate on purpose so that um, non uh, people who are not necessarily customers yet can come without having to go through that security gate. And then on the other side of it, we have uh, two loading stalls and another parking stall. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is just a landscape plan. I think we've kind of discussed this. We can go over, if you have specific questions, we can talk about that. Next slide, please. Again, landscape in more detail. There's a lot going on on, on both frontages, uh, trying to be a good neighbor. Uh, greening up the side of the, the both street frontages. 
and along the uh, north property line, which is uh, on the left in this view. Next slide. These are just some renderings. And again, illustrating that we no longer have the peaked roofs that we had in the original views that you just looked at. Uh, next slide, please. And some elevations that talk about materials and what the finishes are in profiles. Next slide. Uh, again, this is the primary view on Sebastopol on the top, and on the bottom is the north elevation, which faces the industrial lot to the north. Next slide. slide. And that might be it. Adam. I think that's it. So if, if we could just go back to maybe the this, this, uh, site plan view, that's maybe the best. Um, Steve, did you want to add anything to that discussion? No, uh, thank you, Robin. That's um, a good uh, overall presentation. And between the two presentations, I think we've kind of covered it and would uh, like to kind of open it for discussion. All right. Um, so, uh, by the way, uh, Steve, could you just give us your full name and your relationship to the project, please, for the for the record? Sure. Steve Tangney. T-A-N-G-N-E-Y. I am the developer of the project and uh, principal of West Coast Self Storage. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate you. Um, so I think what we'll do now is we'll go to public comment. And, and so this is a concept item, and we, we do like to afford the public the chance to speak on concept items because then that eventually, you know, inevitably leads to maybe a question or two from um, the board, if there are public comments. So uh, if we could have the three applicants, please lower your hands in the Zoom platform, that'd be great. And then uh, I'm gonna turn it over to the recording secretary here to uh, to proceed with public comment. So again, uh, let's open up public comment. I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle and uh, let her uh, manage any potential raised hands on the Zoom platform. All right, thank you so much, Chair Weigel. I am currently not seeing any hands raised for public comment. All right, so seeing no raised hands for public comment, uh, let's just uh, go through this real quick. Adam mentioned we didn't receive any uh, emails or anything. We don't have any voicemails or other late correspondence as of the, me the meeting today, correct? Correct. Correct. All right, then let's uh, close public comment on the site and bring it back to the board. And we'll just go through the board for questions of both staff and the applicant of this project. Uh, questions, not comments, please. And uh, we'll go from there. So uh, let's kick it off and we'll put uh, board member staff in the hot seat today. Questions of staff and the applicant. Oh, sure. Um, Robin, thank you for focusing on the on the landscape elements. Um, and you mentioned that along the residential sides, um, there was you were paying special attention, which is um, uh, great to hear um, because they especially that building. Um, it's I think it's on the west side. It's in the back. It's that it's that one story house that, that butts up right up against the, the site. Could you say more about what's happening on that back fence right next to the, right next to the residence? from a landscaping and a, and a green screen perspective. Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? Okay, yes. great. Um, the uh yeah this is the best view for it i suppose the the odd weird thing about this is our multifamily zone which is r318 is across britain which is west of the site and there is a residence over there the the 20 foot setback you would think would would be on on this side of the street would be facing this residential zone but it's actually geared to the front yard and the front yard is the main entry in the main street that it's on which is uh, which is Sebastopol so that's where the 20 foot buffer is and so that's you know we've set the building back accordingly uh we set the building back against uh Britain as well according to to the zoning envelope and we've um provided significant landscaping on both sides uh to to address that that 
adjacency. Uh, I am not really at liberty to talk about the plant species. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not the landscape architect, but um, I think um, we've done a, a a, a good job of not only addressing street improvements along Sebastopol, which includes some trees, as you can see there, but also uh, some shrubs and some landscaping around the perimeter on both this view, which is where that 20 foot setback is imposed, as well as Bretagne, which you can see in this view there, um, to, to give a little bit of, of white space relief uh, from the adjacent multifamily resident or single family residents. And, and, and as I think as Adam mentioned, surrounding on all the other sides, it's either business park or light industrial. So those are the two areas that we're heavily landscaping and we're, we're you know, it's appropriate because those are the streets we're up against as well on this quarter lot. Cool. Uh, board right, member Snap, any other, any other questions? No, thank you. All right, okay. board member Sharon, any questions? Um, kind of re related to uh, board member Steph's question, um, and one thing you you mentioned, Robin, um, with the frontage on Sebastopol Road, there's the setback, and I'm just trying to find the actual setback. Are you actually is the building bumping up against that 20 foot setback that you have, or is it kind of pushed to the south as much as possible, or is it generously set back? I just I'm not able to find that right. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. the 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 images in this set are pixelated. If you could read it, I have a version I have on my computer. I'm looking. I at have it pulled up here too. If you oh, good. Me, uh, yeah, okay. we we should all have them pull up so you can tell okay. us the the page number. Yeah. Um. Geez, I'm looking at the the, the actual CD set. Um. So I don't know that you guys have access to it, but it is the drawing we were just looking at. Adam had it up a minute a moment ago. Um. Yeah, that one. The, if you could read that dimension on the bottom there, uh, uh, towards on Bretain, it says 20 feet, uh, right there. Yep, right there. So there's a 20 foot dimension, and then there's a uh, a six foot dimension and an eight inch dimension. Um, that that dash dot dot line is the new dedication line. You can see where the original and the current um, site or property line is. It's way over there on on the south, right uh, on the on the far right there. And we're moving it all. We're moving it over forty three feet and providing driving lanes and parking lanes and and and. And then on top of that, inside of the property line, we're providing the sidewalk. That's why we have a total from that new dedication line, 25 foot eight is, is the dimension we have to the building. So we, yes, we are up against the setback of 20 feet, but it's taken from the back of the sidewalk. So it's, it's, it's five feet plus eight feet plus 20 feet. And I'm sorry, I said six feet just now on the sidewalk yeah. dimension, because that's what it says. That is not correct. It's five feet. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so in, in terms of potentially moving the building is sort of where, I, where I'm thinking, there, is there any kind of leeway to be moving towards the south, towards the Vestal Road? Or um, I, 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 the uh, question is because you, you explained that. And Adam, yeah, I think you can uh, yeah, mention that, uh, Planner Ross. So. Board Member Sharon. Yeah, so, so pers pursuant to the zoning code, uh, specific yeah. for storage, uh, self-storage uh, <laughs> buildings, uh, they have to have a 20 foot setback from uh, front setback when adjacent to uh, a residential zoning district or a residential use. In this case, even though Bretagne Lane is to the west of the property, it's still considered adjacent. So they have a 20 foot setback from a uh, minimum setback from Sebastopol Road, and that's measured from the back of the back of the cur uh sorry back of the sidewalk okay that was yeah great that was the exact dimension i was looking for so 20 foot from the back of the sidewalk and so right now we're 25 8 from the back of the sidewalk or no we're 25 8 from the new property line and that, okay. that the five foot eight that's on top of the 20 feet it accommodates the curb and the sidewalk 
Okay. And so we are 20 feet from the back of the sidewalk. Correct. Okay. Correct. Perfect. Um, so we're but, you know, maximizing the space. That's cool. Yeah, I just wanted to verify and clar clarify that. So um, thank you, Robin, and thank you, Planner Ross. And um, that'll do it for my questions. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. I'm, I'm actually going to piggyback on Adam's question here real quick. So um, the I guess what's unique here is this parcel will get developed. Its street uh, right of way will be increased as part of that development. But the adjacent parcels both to the east and to the west do not have, well, actually, it looks like the one of them to the west does the the church, the Bayside Church, I guess, has it. How are, how is the city going to, I guess, can, are we going to continue to wait for this incremental development along Sebastopol to increase the, the traffic right of way? Because I know the, the right of way opens up, I guess, at the next intersection to the east. I, I'm just curious kind of how the city is planning on, on that component. So good question. Uh, in my conversations with uh, eng the engineering development services division, uh, it is case by case. So they will widen it for this property frontage and then get everything else as, as new developments proposed at these locations. Cool. Well, thanks. That's, that's kind of what I thought, but I, you know, because if anybody's driven on Sebastopol road in this area, if you're familiar, it kind of, it kind of does this business a lot <laughs> where it, it, it kind of goes down to two lanes, opens up to three lanes, goes down to two lanes, open up, opens up to five lanes kind of thing. Uh, anyway, so I just thought I'd ask. Uh, okay, uh, board member Wolski, your questions of staff. I don't any have any questions, thank you. Thanks, Sheila. Board member McHugh, any questions of staff or the applicant? Actually, I think you have gotten my question answered. Because I was concerned about, you know, I'm just knowing that if the developer is going to do curb gutters and sidewalks and widen the street, is that correct, the staff? Yes, that is correct. And that's incremental down Sebastopol Road. Yes, as in they'll do their frontage improvements, a new a development, say it's uh, slightly. Across, so if, if they were to redevelop uh, the property, the residential residentially zoned property across Britain Lane, that's when they would get that portion widened as well. So if that's what you mean by incrementally, then, then yes, that is right. Okay. And so if I'm understanding you correctly, then uh, you're depending upon the developers on Sebastopol Road do this project or any other project to improve that uh, uh that street, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And is that city policy or is that the city engineer or something? How, how does that all go together? Yeah, so uh, there's this, I don't wanna say too much and maybe say the wrong thing, but I can say what I, what I think I know, which is um, as new projects are proposed, uh, you would do the right-of-way improvements. Uh, there's a certain threshold of uh, financial figure that would that would trigger that it's pretty low um, in terms of the cost of actual construction so um, so that's when the city gets those improvements put in is each it's on the it's on the um, the responsibility of each developer to come in and input uh, and put in those new public right-of-way improvements which are you know widening the street uh, putting in a new curbing gutter if there's existing upgrading to meet whatever current standards are are established in in the um, the city's code, is that and that's city ordinance? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Okay. Thank you, uh, Michelle. Looks like maybe Steve has a comment on that one. I just saw him raise his hand. So I don't know if he has the right. Steve, you to should have a himself. prompt allowing you to unmute. I do now. Thank you. You're uh, well, I did, but it, it kind of got answered, got addressed. Um, uh, no need to comment at this point. Um, we're undergrounding the utilities across that frontage well, as well. That's one of the requirements. It's, it's, uh, it's quite a nice uh, street improvement, and, and you're right. It seems to be happening on a case-by-case uh, -case basis as uh, lots, individual lots redevelop up and down Sebastopol Road. 
Um, I think there's a dozen or so cases of, of improved, widened uh, streets, uh, Sebastopol Road, and, and we'll add one more to it. Well, thanks, Steve. Uh, newly elected Vice Chair Birch, do you have any questions of staff? Nope, not at this time. Excellent. All right, so we'll bring it back. Yeah, Adam. I've got uh, one since we're kind of piggybacking here. I was going to bring it up in, in my comments, but it's also kind of a question related to the roadway improvements. Um, to to uh, continue with um, Bertain Lane also, um, you know, but my comment was going to be that you seeing that there's no extension of any sidewalk or anything. I mean, Bertain is a, does have access down at the end of the way to Joe Redota. Um, and there's that little neighborhood behind it. <clears throat> but if, you know, there was any sidewalk improvement north on Bertain Lane, there would be sort of a sidewalk to nowhere. But I was just wondering, um, is there any requirement on kind of a, on a, the non-arterial feeder um, road going up Bertain? It's more of a question for staff, I guess. Yeah, so it, it, it just be along whatever the property frontage is. I don't have the exact standards for Britain Lane yeah. um, as far as, you know, the <laughs> any sort of sidewalk width or, or curb or, or gutter. The uh, rendering show that it doesn't have a sidewalk, um, yeah. but that could be changed um, with whatever engineering requires when we get the formal submittal. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so it, it, it if may there or may is a not. requirement, okay, if there is a requirement, then engineering will pop it in there. Correct. Um, yes. Okay, because, uh, yeah, because, I mean, when I say it's sort of sidewalk to nowhere, if you look down Britain at the, the residences there, there's no sidewalks going up, up the road, so it would be sort of sidewalk to nowhere. But since we're talking about incremental roadway improvements, then having side incremental sidewalk improvement, this could be the first, even if it takes decades to move down Britain Lane, um, this provides, you know, an incremental improvement. But good to know that the, it could be on the city's plate um, since we are just in concept now. Okay, yeah, thanks for that answer. No problem. All right, so let's bring it back to the board for comments. Oh, uh, Steve, did you have another thought? Or did you just forget to lower oh, your hand? <laughs> I did. Go ahead. No. Nope. Oh, you forgot to lower your hand. All right, cool. All right, let's bring it back to the board for comments on the project. Um, I, I was uh, just remembering something about this particular parcel. Uh, this was one of the first parcels that I ever reviewed when I uh, joined Design Review Board like four and a half or five years ago. And I, Michael may remember this. Uh, but I think it was a proposed cannabis facility, I think, uh, years ago. So it's interesting now that it's a, a, a self-storage uh, facility. Yeah. I, I just quite, thought it was interesting. Quite decorative at that. If I remember right, it was really quite uh, an – it was going to be an architectural gem without windows. Yeah, 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 <laughs> the, the cannabis facility. Yeah, so uh, anyway, just fun little factoid for everybody. Um, this parcel's uh, already – I've been here uh, once upon a time. So uh, anyway, let's uh, bring it back for comments from the board. And I'd like to go to board member Sharon for the hot seat for comments. And I'm going to try to take notes as best I can. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the, uh, 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 thank you um, for a great um, conceptual package. And uh, thank you, staff, for um, presenting um, the background and particulars for us. Um, uh, again, a, a, another um, uh, quality design from uh, you guys. Thank you for, for bringing this to us. Um, similar to your, the one you presented um, two weeks ago. Um, uh, yeah, it, I, I think it would be a um, good use of the site. I think um, even more being a good use of the site, I think I, I appreciate you um, really emphasize being good neighbors and um, emphasizing the improvements um, to this uh, stretch of, 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 of road. Uh, yeah, as Drew mentioned, this has been, you know, in potential development for a while. And so to see something actually being done is, is um, a great sign. And to, to see an applicant who really wants to maximize being good neighbors and, and adding to um, the, the amenities on, on the road um, 
is a is a positive sign. I think you guys can continue with that as you're moving through your design development. Um, the building itself, uh, in, in similar to the um, to your your, your submittal, um, it 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 is a um, it, you know it is what it is a utilitarian building, but it's it's well done. It's tasteful. Um, it's clean. Um, I think you are doing um, uh, you're on the right track with with your uses of having the potential noisier side of things going along with the potential noisier side of the property. You're not going along the um, retain lane, but you're going to where there are other uh, industrial um, um, or at least businesses on that side, um, on the east side. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, I think that um, the, the robust landscape is great. Um, one, because you know, being a landscape architect, I like to see robust landscapes. Um, but uh, you guys are um, just, again, being good neighbors, beautifying um, and really um, adding to the to the site. But yeah, my question, and I'm glad um, the board member staff brought up the um, question about the um, north end of the site and the kind of if there was hedging, if there was treatment for that um, resident that's over, residents that's over there. And I wanted to hear more about, you know, so I was really diving into those um, particulars about setbacks to see if there's any way to squeeze any more space over there because you have really robust um landscaping around the front of the site and the the west side along Bertain. um it's not necessarily um so important to have it um along the east side of the site again that's where the more industrial side of things are but it would be nice to see um uh a, a little more um you know, can't can necessarily do separation, but screening for the residents over there to have something that is more, you know, you've got evergreen flowering vines along the fence um, on the east side of the site, but the north treatment that you have there you, uh, in your landscape, it's called out um, as vegetated swale, so um, low growing things, potentially not even shrubby. Um, uh, and uh, no vines um, that I can see called out. Uh, there's rose actually. I'm seeing this now here. Yeah, so the roses um, are good, but to see something that is taller um, and provides really a, a visual screening, you have the trees there, but they're spaced um, pretty far apart. Um, and to figure out something that maybe that's more and more, you know, densify that hedgerow um, in a way, not make a hedgerow, but densify that, that that LA along there to create this this pathway um, along the back where people will be driving through um, and it's right on the other side of the fence from the residents. So um, and that's where I was wondering if if you could just you know if you could squeeze out just a couple more feet um, you could get more things in there to make it um, uh, both uh, varied um, when you're looking at it you know um, in um, section view. Um, so you have variation in heights, um, but then also um, in the width and the plan view, you have more, you can play with things a little bit more and, and have the illusion of space. So if there's any way to squeeze any more out there um, or to densify uh, kind of the wall um, or to add, you know, part of your vines um, with your fencing there. We don't know what your fencing um, is going to be yet. Um, also going to be really interested to see what that's going to be, what the treatment is. Um, on that side, um, and even on the um, the east side, but um, kudos for um, um, a well thought out concept. And um, again, really love the the site improvements that you're doing. Um, and I'll be interested to hear what the city has if they have any requirements for Bertain Lane um, uh, in terms of sidewalk. But um, you know, as I said, it's, you know, could be an incremental improvement. But it's also at, at the moment and in the short term, a uh, sidewalk to nowhere. But we'll see what the city says in terms of requirements. Um, but nice work on Sebastopol Road. And um, yeah, thank you for the concept. All right. Uh, uh, Steve, I, I, I keep seeing your hand go up and down. So I, I think I'll say this. So we'll, we'll wrap up all the comments. And then at the end, we'll turn it back over to you and we'll kind of say, hey, did any of these comments? seem undoable do they you know are you seeing any sort of uh, hiccups whether you know financial design wise whatever we'll have a quick conversation about that and uh, we'll just do that at the end um so just wanted to let you know because I, I keep seeing your hand kind of go up and down there 
uh, in the participants box. So anyway, just want to let you know, we'll do it at the end. Uh, so that being said, uh, thanks, Adam. And we'll go to board member Wolski for her comments on the project. Uh, thank you. So for me, um, I like the treatment on that corner where the office is. I think that helps to differentiate it and give the building um, facade a little more interest. Um, there was in one of the renderings that kind of showed a monument sign, there was some bright yellow there. Um, and I think I'd, I'd personally like to see a little bit more color, a little brighter color. So if that could be incorporated, I think that for me, it would be a good idea. I like all the landscaping. Um, uh, elevation of concern for me was the north elevation. Um, for me, there's just not enough visual interest on that elevation. It just comes across as pretty flat. And I think the building is around 30 feet tall. So for the neighbors and people in the back, that will create quite a visual impact. Um, let's see, anything else? I do like that you've extended the towers higher. I think that helps uh, for the design of the building. And I'm gonna keep saying this with all the storage unit <laughs> self storage projects. Uh, the zoning code allows for a caretaker unit to be added and there, this is plumbed with restrooms. So I, I would appreciate if a caretaker unit was provided. And we've heard before that may not be needed for security, but I think it was Vice Chair Birch who mentioned it's, it's also a benefit for workforce housing. So that is it for my comments. Thank you. Thanks, Sheila. And we'll go to board member Stapp now for his comments. Um, I don't have anything to add uh, other, uh, add to the comments that uh, my colleagues have, have made, other than emphasize that the um, the, the building is it's an attractive treatment for this kind of building, and it's going to fit in well, especially with on the Sebastopol Road side of the street. Um, and then, um, as we as we've mentioned, just that that north side, that that back side of the building, um, which is a, um, adjacent to that 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 residential area, um, if there could be some some additional attention paid to green screening or somehow making that back facade um uh a, a little bit more attractive um from that perspective that would be um that, that would be beneficial but otherwise a really nice a really nice treatment thank you hey thank you board member step board member McHugh. any comments I do. I, I also support doing something with the north elevation. Uh, I don't know exactly what, but somehow to make that more attractive. Otherwise, it's just a big. It's it's just like a big wall. Um, I like the conceptual uh, design, though, and I like the uh, uh, the color scheme. I think that's really nice. Um, one of the things that that I'm concerned about. And it doesn't have anything really to do with this particular project, but it does in the sense that I'm just getting a little concerned about the fact that the city requires developers to do curb gutters and sidewalks and spend money on projects that are um, that they're difficult to pencil out anyway. I mean, we had issue with this at Stony Point Flats. I I I am, and I and I know staff. You're doing what you're what you're obligated to do, but this is just it's just irritating, and I don't think you know that particularly on Sebastopol Road. Incrementally, you know, one developer does this, another developer does that. I'm just having a whole lot of difficulty with the approach the city takes with respect to street improvements. So, I want to get that on the record, and uh, and I will conclude my comments with that. Thanks, John. Appreciate you. Yeah, the, the, the street improvement thing is kind of an interesting uh, bugaboo in a way. Um, you know, we don't have any, you know, purview necessarily over that. But I think when you look at kind of the overall design of a, a street improvement or of a right of way or whatever, um, you know, I think that's where I think kind of the level of expertise of this particular board may come into play in that, you know, you have to start looking at things holistically uh, about how something is improved, whether that's through the right of way adjustments or perhaps through, um, you know, I don't know, traffic study or something like that. So 
it, it is kind of intertwined in a way with design review, uh, but it's it's also kind of a land use concern and also kind of a city policy. So it's a it's one of those kind of spaghetti things I think that we find ourselves in from time to time uh, on this board. So anyway, with that, I will turn it over to uh, Vice Chair Birch. Great, thank you. Yeah, very supportive of the project. Again, um, another good project from this team. Um, thoughtful and, you know, again, I've, I've actually learned a lot about self-storage and don't have the same kinds of questions that I have because this is one of the groups that's been able to explain why it doesn't require so many parking spaces and they get the most utility out of the site. And um, so that's great. I, I um, have to say that I did, when, when we got the applicant presentation, Yesterday or day before is late correspondence. The renderings were in there, and I immediately jumped to the landscape plans and sort of did my visual. Um, I'm not an architect, a landscape architect, but I did my visual. It looks like they really line up, so the promise of the renderings looks uh, very realistic, which I thought was was great. I, I have uh, concerns about the north, the, the north side of the building as well. Um, and I think that a uh, couple of things, the planting ideas that Adam talked about, uh, what the fencing is there, and we'll certainly, you know, in terms of a final design review for a public action, uh, for a board action, we'll, we'll need details of the fencing and I think a combination of the details of the fencing and some updates to that landscape that would create a visual block from, from the adjacent property are great. Um, also, I don't believe I saw the lighting plan and I can't really go check today because with, with, with a technical glitch here, I'm just on the iPad instead of having my computer with me as well. But a lighting plan is also gonna tell something about that relationship to the property on the north j just a bit, what the fixtures are at that end, how high are they, how do they hit the ground? So the, the uh, lighting plan and the um, photometric study, which are I believe required for the final action uh, would be important to have. And again, that'll be part of assessing how the north end of the property and the building interact with the neighbor uh, at night. And as far as the treatment of the end of the building, you know, I, I'm not sure we, we've, <laughs> we've had another project that we were gonna throw a couple of windows onto and that would look really strange on this huge facade. It may be some color blocking that matches up with some of the vertical you know, whites and grays and such that are on the front of the building. Uh, it may not be something as dramatic as even um, articulation in, in planes, but it may just be some really interesting color blocking or a variation that um, d diminishes the, the impact of, of, of the north end of the building. So without, you know, we'll leave it to, leave it to you guys. You're the experts, and I know that you probably work with projects and many places where you have different requirements for different sides of the buildings. I think this board's reaction really seems to be that there is an interaction with residential property um, at that north end and we need to see just a little bit more. So um, as far as the street improvement comment goes, I'm just gonna take two minutes to share that you know, in most jurisdictions, we have developers doing, uh, making significant improvements to street to uh, street um, scapes, to, to curb and gutter and sidewalk and landscape areas. It's really a, a really very typical, normal thing that happens. Is it right, wrong, or otherwise? I can't say it is, uh, you know, developers enjoy benefit from the property. If you don't do the work at this time, it can be really, it can be really uh, create an interesting situation. And for anybody who drives North Street, um, north of college, uh, we have uh, two projects side by side, a uh, project that's a three-story apartment project that we approved about six or seven years ago, um, Warren Hedgepath design with a nice upturned roof. Um, they were required at that time to make the improvement to the new dedication line. So the sidewalk curb and gutter is done. Their landscape is, um, uh, is done to a, a level that they won't that will be taken away in the dedication, but the city required them to do the, do the landscape to that point. Parcel to the north of that, it's developed much earlier with no requirement to make the improvement, but they couldn't, but they couldn't, um, do, they couldn't develop anything in it. So it's a huge dirt lot behind these buildings. And I think that you know, in, in the short-term, long-term game of what parcels get developed and that sort of thing, 
there is a real benefit to the city, as in the appearance of the city for all of us driving up and down Sebastopol Road, that these do get done and that we don't have any left behind because the North Street situation is just sort of a blighted spot on the street. It was a laydown yard for the last road project is essentially what it was. So anyway, that's my my two cents on that and uh, supportive of the project and look forward to seeing it back. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. And and I actually only have, I agree with everybody else, uh, great comments. I took a lot of notes. The one thing that, that I would actually, uh, I haven't heard or perhaps might disagree with is I actually like the sloped um, uh, kind of tower element. And the reason why is because this project is flanked by buildings that have gable roofs and things. Uh, whereas uh, the Piner Road project that we just approved uh, a couple months ago, last month, um, was flanked by a lot of kind of industrial flat roofed buildings. And so I think from a, uh, from a vernacular perspective, um, those little kind of angle slopes uh, make a little bit more sense in this context uh, than they would, you know, I think somewhere else. Um, and so, and I, I think it brings down the scale just a, a skosh on this project. But then again, if, if you're struggling with, you know, screening uh, HVAC units, which I think you might be, um, then that may be, you know, a, a discussion point at our next at the next time we see your your project, but that would be my only additional comment between what I heard from everybody else. Um, and I'm going to write that down real quick in my notes, and then we'll uh, bring it back to the applicant uh, for any questions of any of the comments. Uh, so just give me one second to, to write that down. So I took a lot of notes and uh, so we'll turn it back over to Steve and his team if they've got any questions of the board. Um, if they heard anything tonight that that you know maybe is undoable for whatever reason we'd love to hear that feedback and, and we'll go from there. So Steve, <clears throat> I think you'll have permission to speak now. All right, um, you can hear me? We can, thanks. All right, yeah. Um... So I, I hear the comments, uh, a lot of focus on, on the north end, and um, that's understandable. It is kind of the back of the building, the way we have it designed right now. We will come back uh, when we submit with some improvements on the north end. There is a solid fence currently. Um, I'm assuming it's a fence installed by that homeowner originally. Uh, we would typically um, work with them to uh, reconstruct if it's weathered out and old, uh, you know, a, a better new fence um, at our cost. Um, but it is currently a solid fence. And I would expect and assume they would want it to stay that way, but we would work with that homeowner in any event. Um, <clears throat> we originally put this project together with less than a 20 foot setback in the front, uh, not understanding that it was the side of the property across retain lane that actually triggered that 20 foot setback. Um, we, we originally had less and we had more in the back on the north side. And, and um, we're, we're kind of pushed, I guess, to the back by the requirements in the front. If there's any leeway, the city can, uh, kind of a question for staff, Adam, uh, if that can be reduced to be less than 20 uh, through the variance process or whatever, we would be happy to spend that uh, by increasing the landscaping in the back. Uh, our building is kind of already minimal and the cost of uh, being a corner lot uh, with underground uh, utilities and paving and rearranged uh, storm drain lines, et cetera, is very expensive uh, front yard improvements on this on this property. And it's it's difficult to shrink the building since that's the revenue side of the equation. Um, but we're happy to uh, increase the landscaping in the back if the building is sort of movable toward the front. Thanks, Stephen. And I think from what, from what I'm hearing from 
staff, what it sounds like to me is that that new that new line's a little immovable. So I think the direction from the board would be to to go back with your architect and your landscape architect and explore plantings that could fit within six inches or eight inches or whatever kind of works in that zone that makes may start to create sort of hedging or buffering or some sort of kind of screen element. Um, I think if, if, if enlargement is not an option, what I heard from pretty much everybody uh, was because there is a substantial residential uh, area behind the project that some sort of you know, a screening in in in, the, in a landscape element is preferred, and and so we're going to leave it to you guys to to figure out what solution works for that, um, in terms of of doing it within a footprint that you kind of have. Um, I, I think, you know, I would I would say don't try to move the building, right? Don't try to shrink the building square footage. You know, you've 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 kind of got it at a square footage that works for you that gets all your parts and pieces together in terms of, you know, the revenue generation component that you're looking for. So I, I think the direction from the board is primary. Let, let's just evaluate what can happen there, given the confines you have and, and get, get the design team to be a little creative with it. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And um, Bill Reinhardt, our, our landscape architect is on the line. So he's hearing all this firsthand and we'll come back with uh, something along those lines. Perfect. I just had and a, then, a quick, kind of ahead, ask a quick question related to that. I was just looking for a dimension on that that kind of, that planter strip there, um, and you said you had the construction set. Um, I don't see one on our project set. Just I'm just curious. It, you know, it looks to be it's pretty small. It's about five Three, feet. It's five feet. Okay. It's about five feet. But I want to point out that preliminarily yeah. we're using it for. Uh, as a kind of a swale. So that kind yeah. of limits what we can put in there unless we can figure out a different place for that purpose. So you, you're using it as your, your dedicated stormwater swale? Yeah, and perhaps uh -huh. Monica, Monica might be able to speak more uh, clearly about what our options are with that. Because yeah, because you do have bio, more other bioretention around the, wrapping around the pertain side and then the front, but I see, I see, you know, I, I know that that, that is a, a constraint is what you can plant in a swale. You can only plant cer certain things in there and still call it a swale. So, yeah. And yeah, again, this, again, oh, and I see Monica, you have your hand up. You're from the landscape side of things. Sybil. Oh, oh, excuse me. Okay. Does she have so, uh, uh, ability to Adam, speak? Yeah, Adam, let's uh, grant Monica Shaw the ability to talk, please. Monica, you should have a prompt allowing you to. Hello. Hello. Hi, this is Monica Shaw. Can you hear me? Gotcha. You can. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so the, the swale is a five foot wide uh, 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 long swale. It's about 180 feet long, and it is dedicated for the portion of the stormwater treatment. Um, it, it basically uh, uh, will collect, it's proposed to collect that. A uh, road um, that's adjacent to it between the building and the swale, and so there are trees planted in within that swale. But I I agree that it may have some limitations on what what can be planted in terms of screening. Sure, and I and I think one thing to think about is maybe if that swale area, if you know, how much you actually need to fit with the the planning requirements and where you can potentially rearrange that. So you can rededicate that to not being um, stormwater um, treatment, but being mm -hmm. thought of more as your backup house there, because, you know, I'm looking at this, the streetscape um, and street view of that area. Um, it's, it's, that's good. It's right in that neighbor's backyard. Um, so um, mm -hmm. if you really need to, re uh, think the the plantings and to have it not be stormwater treatment area um, if it, if it's possible to move it um, to then switch it into thinking of it as more of a, the vegetated buffer um, mm -hmm. so yeah currently the way it is proposed is that the road will uh, just uh, sheet flow into that swale 
if we mm -hmm. have to uh, relocate that that uh, square footage into perhaps on the west side along Britain yep. Lane, we could pro uh, um, increase the size of the bioretention facility. Um, yes. it's just, it would just mean that we will have to collect all that uh, runoff from the street into DIs yeah. and storm drains and route it over to um, the bioretention, which would add cost, of course, um, to the project. Yep. So. Well, of course, yeah, and that's that's the priorities. And as Drew mentioned, that's the um, so where your uh, your team's creativity and um, know how really comes into play. And look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. But that, those right. are just our, like our thoughts. Yeah, thanks, Adam. It looks like we got one more question from Steve, and uh, so we'll go no, to Steve. I'm, Steve, it looks like you you can talk. I there. forgot to lower my hand again. Sorry. Oh, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so I think that's all we've got from the board. Does anybody have any final thoughts? Colors, layout, north elevation, plantings? No. So seeing none. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to send off this typed up list I have. I'm going to send it off to the recording secretary and uh, our staff liaison, and hopefully we can get that incorporated into the minutes for you guys. And hopefully we look forward to seeing you uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, do you guys have any and, uh, any other comments from the applicant team? Thoughts? Cool. Thanks so much, Steve and your team. We appreciate you uh, coming back. Uh, and bring in a, a, a good quality project to us uh, to comment on. So uh, again, we'll hope to see you soon. Thank so you. We're gonna, thanks. So we're gonna move on to item 8.2 now, uh, which is uh, Giffen Building 1, which is a concept design review at 2715 Giffen Avenue, DR22-004. And uh, we're gonna turn it over to uh, project planner Monet Shekali. I hope I got it right. Did I get it right? <laughs> Close. Close Thank enough. You. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chair, for introducing this project and good evening, board members. I'm going to share my screen right now and turn the camera off. <laughs> okay, so I will start with the next page. So <clears throat> the project before you today is a concept design review for the future development of a new two-story, approximately uh, 38,000 square foot industrial building that will be used for cannabis uses. And this is a neighborhood context map. As you can see, this area has some large industrial buildings with lots of surface parking spaces and some vacant lots. The closest residential uses are located on the northeast side of the parcel. As you can see here, they are all single family dwelling units. And here is a closer aerial view of the project site as it is today. Um, the, here, the red square rectangular is where the proposed building is going to be placed. I believe a few years ago, there was another building there, which uh, the owner demolished it, and now they are proposing a new building at the same location. This site is pretty flat and already uh, developed with number of industrial buildings. About the general plan land use and zone, the project site is zone light industrial, and the general plan land use designation is general industry. The current project before you is a concept design review and the applicant has to come back with a major design review because what they are proposing is more than 10,000 square foot, square feet or more in the floor area. And here are some pictures of the existing lot. As you can see, this lot, as I mentioned, also is pretty flat and there are no trees at this area. And um, this side is protected by a 12 foot tall security fence. The proposed building will be an addition to the existing campus that already has six warehouses or industrial buildings with small, some small accessory structures. Here is the uh, site plan that shows location of the proposed building on the lower right side. And here is a proposed site plan. Uh, it shows the existing, the proposed building with the new driveway and new swing gate on the right side. Site work would include new paving and parking with an area for semi-truck loading and unloading. 
the fence will be uh, adjusted to accommodate a new building and a new gate for semi-truck access. Here is the south and north elevation for the proposed building. The uh, proposed building would be consistent with the existing structures on this campus, constructed as a concrete tilt-up and exterior coloring of the building would be gray. No new landscaping is being proposed. The applicant says due to the hazardous soil, and I will defer to the applicant for more details. And here are the elevations for all other sites. And again, I would defer to the applicant for more details and they can provide more information. Uh, I just, I have to mention that today around noon, I received a call from a neighbor. She did not provide me any comment. She didn't provide me her name, but she was upset about the uses in that area and mentioned the odor produced by cannabis is very high in that area. And she was not in favor of the proposed project, but for the use, not the building itself. And with that, uh, this is the concept design review, and it is exempt from the California Environmental Review because no decision is being made today. And with that, the planning and the applicant and the planning and economic development department are requesting that the design review board provide comments and directions for the given building one project. And that's the staff presentation, the applicant is available to answer questions. They don't have any PowerPoint, but they are available to answer questions. Thank you. Thanks, Monet. <clears throat> so if we're not going to do an applicant presentation, uh, let's kick it to public comment on the project. And uh, so I'm going to turn it over to the recording secretary, and we're going to go to public comment on this project. And if we see any raised hands, uh, public gets three minutes to comment on the project. So, Michelle. Thank you so much. And I am not seeing any hands for public comment at this time. All right, so seeing no public comment, um, let's just do a quick little check. So it sounds like Monet got some late correspondence, which she uh, noted. There were no uh, additional kind of voicemails or anything else at the city on this project today. No, nothing. It was just a phone call with no name. Perfect. All right. Um, so then let's bring it back to the board for questions of the applicant and staff. Um, I did have a quick clarification, Monet. Um, you said that you said something about hazardous soils, and I didn't catch all of it. Could you could you reiterate that, please? Sure. I asked the applicant to provide landscape plans, and they mentioned that they cannot plant any trees in that uh, area of the property to the soil hazard. There's something issue with the soil, and I believe uh, the applicant, uh, Katie Clark and China, they can answer those questions about landscaping, because no landscape landscaping plans were provided for this project. Uh, you are muted. Yeah, I just saw it. Uh, <laughs> I imagine that'll probably be a question from Adam um, and maybe <coughs> others about the lack of a landscape plan. So maybe can we get um, Michelle? Can we get the uh, the applicant? Uh, maybe the architect, the project owner, project applicant to raise their hands in the Zoom platform here and grant them permission to speak. So it looks like we have Katie Clark. So, Katie, you should have a prompt allowing you to unmute. Pardon me? Uh, it sounds like you can speak, Katie. So please uh, introduce your name and uh, relationship to the project, and hopefully you can answer our question. Uh, this is Katie Clark, and I. Um, have done the development on this entire project. These were empty abandoned buildings for 12 years. Um, I think you're probably all aware that this is a cannabis campus. Um, we're building back building one. This property was contaminated by Oakley years ago. We actually have the um, uh, cleaning process um, is actually on our site also, in which Ockley still maintains and deals with. We're not allowed to dig more than 18 inches without having someone out there to check the soil. Actually have a tree person out there today. Some trees were planted to the back of the property at a time, and um, we're removing five dead trees this week. Um, it just not, does not survive in this property, in this soil. Um, and that was long before we came along. 
So um, if anyone has been out to the property, there aren't um, trees on Diaby's site, which is taken care of, uh, which was the old Ockley site. And uh, there really isn't a way for us to do landscape that will live for any amount of time. We are putting in a bio swale. Um, that's going to be required. We're going to work very hard on that. Um, I don't even know how that's going to survive in the long term. Uh, we're going to have to bring in quite a bit of soil and do everything we can um, to, to assist it. Cool. Thank you so much, Katie. We appreciate you. Um, so I'll then turn it over to the board here. It looks like Adam wants to lead off some questions here, probably about I, I, questions. So we'll go with Adam with questions of staff and applicant. Uh, my main question, I was just wondering what that contaminant was. I, I'm not familiar with uh, Ockley. Yes. So Ockley was the original, uh, and then it was JDSU, and now it's the Abbey. Apparently, they washed solvents out of the uh, building okay. oh, into oh, the so that was the, that's the name of the company that was there? Correct. Okay. Correct. I thought it might have been something left over from the Navy or something. But. Yes. So, okay, so the company was Ockley, and so it's contaminated with solvents and... Yes. Lots we have only gotten to the things. point, and it's beyond our site. We yeah. have the cleaning okay. facility on ours, but there's wells in a very large area that... Um, all are pumped through the cleaning facility, and uh, they. we've only been able to reduce the entire site by 20% of the well over the last, my understanding, 30 years that it's been going on. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh. It's in interesting. It's the, the, we've seen a number of um, developments in this neighborhood, um, in just right around the corner a couple of weeks ago, and this is the first I've heard of this particular contaminant. I'm not surprised yeah. for the, the historical uses of this whole area, but okay, if, thank you. If they're not aware, sometimes people are not aware of that I did this development. I literally have to have sure. someone on site if we dig 18 inches or more. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm um, really aware. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> well, thank you for, for being aware. Um, okay. And um, I, do, I don't have uh, any other questions than just that clarification. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. So we'll bring it back to the board here. Uh, let's go with board member Wolski. Questions of applicant and staff. Um, yeah, I'm curious. You mentioned the cleanup. I see that on GIS. The, the parcel is is marked. Um, I'm just curious how how long this is this condition is expected to last. Usually, they have some sort of remediation program in place and the expectation is that in such amount of time this could be cleaned up so um, I'd like to see information on that included uh, with a with another submittal or if you want to make comments now that's fine too well they're um, not projecting it to be cleaned up in yours or my lifetime um, I can forward a CD. It's hundreds and hundreds of pages because um, I have sold other buildings here and they're required for lenders. Um, we usually get a CD every few years that discusses the cleanup, but it's not going to be, um, it will not be cleaned up in any of our lifetimes. Jeez. All right, any other questions, uh, Sheila? All right, board member Stapp, any questions of staff of the applicant? Um, no questions from me, thank you. Thanks, Mark. We'll go to John, any questions, John? Uh, no questions for me either. All right, and questions, board member Birch? Uh, not, no, not at this time. The only question I had was that contaminant question. Um, so we'll go to comments now of the board. Uh, and so um, Adam, I'm gonna let you lead this off again. Uh, 
hot seat for Mr. Sharon today. So uh, comments on the project, Adam. Hey, um, <clears throat> thank you, um, Monet, and thank you, um, uh, applicant, for um, the presentation and the concept. Um, yeah, we, um, you know, as far as as packages that for us to review, there, um, it's well, one, it's a, it's pretty straightforward. You're attempting to match. Um, the general feel and tenor of the buildings around there and what you've done before on, on the site. Um, so I can see that, that it's, um, you know, as far as utilitarian, it's very utilitarian. This what it is, um, tilt up uh, box. Um, and it will be great for its use. Um, as far as for us, things for us to um, examine and to really pull apart, there's really not too much in this um, in the concept, um, uh, really, it's just basic site plan and the elevations. Um, you know, I guess we can get a sense of that it's going to be gray, but what color gray um, is going to be the exact same color as the other ones? Um, is it? Uh, you know, what what is the? Um, you know, really the the finish of the the buildings. It, basically, what I'm saying is that we don't have too much really to um, react against, and so when we get concept. Um, review packages, one of the things that's important and special for us is to, if we have detail, it's not that we necessarily want to have everything thought out, but it gives us something to discuss. And with this package, there's not really much to discuss. Sort of the nature of the project that is utilitarian, but we're also tasked with um, with providing superior design um, uh, uh, feedback. And so from what we have here, um, basically it, the structure fulfills its need, um, but we don't, I, I don't have too much um, the design feedback because there's not too much to the design really. Um, you know, we don't know what the fences are gonna be like because there's plenty of fencing around here. Um, thank you for addressing the, the contamination and the, the lack of landscape that's around there. I know that, you know, the rest of the campus there is, um, is, is unvegetated pretty much and, or definitely unvegetated. But across the way, um, you know, there's um, Biavi and the Sonoma Beverage Company. They have trees and lawns and pathways, and there's a little park down the way. Um, there's, it's not just utilitarian. So um, when this does come back, you know, I'd like to see um, how this is going to really add to, you know, the, um, you know, some ways the, util the utility of the neighborhood, but also the beauty of the neighborhood. So um, would like to have some more. Um, uh, definite details when it, when this comes back. Um, is this going to come back to us? Sorry, I was potentially thinking that the last one. Yeah, so Drew's nodding, so it's, is Monet. It. Yeah, it's going to be a um, major design review, correct? Yeah, great. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be really interested to see a lot more of these details. So we can really react to something. Um, and it's not because we want to shut anything down, but it's really just to spark ideas. And so um, look forward to what you uh, come up with, and I'll look forward to hearing what my colleagues have to say as well. So thank you. One more thing I'd like to say so everyone is aware, these are private roads. So these are not even city roads and services. We own all these as far as the complex is concerned. So there, it is a unique situation as far as that's concerned. We have installed the sidewalks and those types of things and the ADA, but everything is owned. So the, it's not a city road with respect to that. And if you do take a look at the Avi, you will find um, their trees are dying very regularly and they're removing them more and more all the time. Surface grass is a possibility. We just don't have the space or the need for surface grass. We're gonna work hard to get a buyer swell and things in, but um, everyone can assure you that trees are not long lived there. The Abbey installed some recently to accommodate uh, something and they're already dying on the site. So we can definitely get it documented that anything with a deep root structure will not survive, unfortunately. There are creative ways to think about the, this as well. Maybe you don't have to plant in ground. There are 
um, containers that can be done um, takes um, more money and more expense, but there are ways to do it. Take some, you know, this is the creative thinking that we like to, to hear about, even if it is, um, you know, private roads um, and from a zoning and planning perspective, uh, even private roads when they serve parcels um, are under city purview. That's one reason why you're here in front of us because it is subject to design review. So. Board member Wolski, comments? Um, yeah, I probably will not be as diplomatic as board member Sharon. Um, this fell pretty flat for me. Uh, it the, the building looked kind of forbidding and fortress-like, and I understand that this is a, a use that requires some security. Um, but again, as board member Sharon said, there just wasn't much to react here to here. Um, I understand perhaps wanting to to make it compatible with with the other buildings on the site. Um, but I those buildings aren't either architecturally um, impressive. So I you know, I would hope that we could do better um, with this iteration of a building. Um, we have, I was kind of noting some things in the design guidelines, you know, outdoor amenities for employees, um, repetitive building design discouraged, single color flat walls discouraged, um, possibly adding accent bands or wall insets and reveals. Um, so I would definitely want to see more on this. And I understand that um, Ms. Clark has some information about this site regarding, you know, the possibility of landscaping, but I'm, I'm looking back at 20 years and it looks like those trees on the uh, western edge were there 20 years ago. So, you know, I, I'd be looking for more information on that as and landscaping possibilities with this project. That's it for me, thanks. Thanks, Sheila. Uh, board member Stat. Um, I'll just echo Sheila and Adam. Um, there's not much there, there. There's not a lot of detail provided, so there's not a lot of uh, not a lot to react um, against. Um, and it is a very spare design. Um, perhaps it's necessary in this case, but um, it is. It's 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 somewhat somewhat bleak. Um, so uh, if there was any way to to um, add some interest. Um, in the buildings themselves or in the landscaping, um, it would at least be nice to, to think that through. Um, so we'll look forward to, or I'll look forward to seeing this again next time around. That's it for me. Thanks, Mark. Uh, board member McHugh. Uh, well, I, I'm looking at this and, and uh, I'm thinking that there's a whole lot of opportunity here. This is pretty bleak. And uh, there's there's got to be something you can do to make this and make this building uh, a little more attractive than what you've uh, what you presented to us here, there's not a whole heck of a lot, as some of my colleagues have said. So you have an opportunity to to uh, do something with this uh, that makes it more attractive. And given the fact that you, uh, as you say, you can't do much with landscaping. Uh, then perhaps you can do something with the building to at least make the building reasonably attractive uh, and and not so bleak. And and I apologize for my comments if if, if those are are offensive. I don't mean that to be, but I just uh, you know with my I'm, not, I'm supporting my other colors. Just not a whole lot here for us to uh, really uh, uh, comment on. So that's where I am. Thanks, John. And we'll go to Vice Chair Birch for his comments. Yeah, uh, same echoing all the comments across the board. Uh, thank you, Board Member Wolski, for bringing some of the simple, straightforward items from the design guidelines uh, to to the table. Um, I'm, you know, I'm thinking that there is, you know, I just don't know who your team is. Um, I'm imagining that a landscape architect could have some creative solutions around. Um, uh, uh, even a minimal amount of landscaping that supports maybe a, a, a more adventurous or interesting uh, architectural design. Um, I would imagine on a cannabis campus, there's a, 
quite a few green thumbs who know how to grow things in less than 18 inches of dirt. So I'm not sure if there's a, an opportunity there, but uh, I, there just, there's nothing here to really, for us to assess. I think we've given you a really good round of comments. Um, go, go back to the design guidelines and uh, there's an awful lot more information that needs to be in a major design review um, package. I'm sure that uh, Monique will share that with you. Um, but yeah, it, you know, I, I'm not sure given how light this package is that you may or may not want to be back for another concept review that's down this road. I don't want to slow you down, but it's a, it's going to be a, it's going to be a big, it's going to be a big shift to get to a public hearing and, uh, you know, a board action starting with this. So, um, you know, good, good luck. I hope you've got the design professionals around you there to, uh, bring this to the next level so that we can really comment on it. Thanks, Michael. And um, I, I'm going to not reiterate anything I've already heard. I think the thing that <clears throat> I reacted to, uh, which may be a little bit different, um, being the only architect, is I, I saw a lot of potential in uh, the tilt-up construction uh, methodology. And as I looked at the surrounding buildings, the thing that the, some of the things that I noticed about those, and which I think are, are very typical for um, kind of industrial, large industrial concrete facilities, is uh, either engaged columns or pilasters that kind of exist a, a around the elevations, um, and that's usually a product of you know kind of a, a, a buttress kind of scenario for to support trusses or beams or girders or something for long spans. So I think um, something like that might be an interesting way to uh, provide some rhythm and depth in the elevations, uh, which is something that you can do within the confines of tilt-up construction, uh, that, that there is some depth to that, that you have, you know, kind of engaged columns or pilasters or something like that. Um, you know, that, that could be interesting. Uh, something else that, that might be interesting in comparison to the other facilities is, Again, in tilt-up construction, you can change the texture and the feel of the concrete when you pour it based on the molds in 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 the pour. So you know maybe there's a textural change uh, at a certain height or something uh, that can add you know kind of some in interest to the building. I, I know you know it's a cannabis facility; it needs to be dark. It has to have controlled lighting inside. It needs to not have exhaust fumes of what's going on inside, you know, by ordinance of the city. There's a lot of considerations kind of for how the building functions and the technical elements for how that all works. Um, but I think, you know, if you spend a little bit of time with tilt up and kind of explored some of the, the flex flexibility within tilt up that you might find um, some nice creative solutions to, to meet some of the design guidelines that, that Sheila referenced. Um, in uh, I think it's in uh, 3.4 business and light industrial parks. Uh, if you guys want to take a peek at that, um, there are some other things in there that are interesting, but I, I think the primary thing that, that we're going to be concerned with, and, and I want to really emphasize this is goal is, is goal a and the goals in business and light industrial parks and buildings. And it says to encourage superior design in business and light industrial parks. And now superior design is a very broad <laughs> sort of thing, right? In many ways. Um, but I would argue that a building that's tilt up concrete all the way around with no articulation, no relief, and it's just got some roll up doors and some man door entrances is not of superior design, right? That's uh, simplistic and basic to design. Functional design doesn't mean it's bad design uh, at all. Uh, it just means it's functional and simplistic design. I think what I've heard from the other five members of this board is that you guys need to, to bring something of superior design while also being utilitarian, functional, secure, safe uh, to the table. And um, I would also uh, echo Michael's thoughts. Uh, if, if you're not feeling like you're getting there, um, I would encourage a second concept design review. Uh, you know, kind of where you are. If you progress a little bit further in the next couple of weeks or the next month, work with staff to schedule an additional concept design review before coming back uh, for your, your entitlement action. Because I think hearing the 
comments of this board tonight, I think the board will have a very difficult time granting you a discretionary entitlement on this project, um, just given where it is right now. And uh, saying that this board is very pro project uh, historically, and um, we want to entitle our projects. We want them to move forward. We don't want them to stop at all. Um, and so to hear those sorts of comments from this board that they're worried about the design I would take that <clears throat> I would take that to heart and figure out how to how to kind of come to the next phase and the next steps for your project hearing those comments from the board um, so uh, I've got some typing to do <laughs> of my own comments uh, while we do that while I do that uh, Katie and China and anybody else from your team do you have any additional thoughts or comments uh, for the board. I'm going to turn it over to Michael uh, to field those while I, while I get to type in here. I don't know if China has, uh, this is Katie Clark again. Um, it is, um, you know, we are looking to do something that um, is similar to everything else that's out there. Um, I will work with the architect and see if we can come up with something that will satisfy um, some appearance, you know, something that you're looking for. Um, we are we are circled with a 12-foot fence. This is an armed guarded site. Um, so I'm uncertain how um, we might bring something that would um, would be appealing because it is not very visual no matter what. Um, so we're just trying to create something um, Maybe we can do something on the second level um, that will create something that's appealing, but the first 12 feet you're not going to see anyway because we are covered. You know, that was a requirement of the city when we created this. So um, it does create an interesting situation um, where we're not looking to spend a lot of money for something at the back of a building that no one's going to see. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely, absolutely. you know, we'll, we'll definitely um, come back with something um, possibly we are looking to eventually paint all of the buildings. Our buildings are just concrete tilt up buildings currently. Um, maybe we could come up something with an overall plan to paint all of the buildings that may make them a little more appealing. but. They all look just about the same right now. And I guess I have one more question since we're at design review. Is there really a desire for us to try to put grass in or something with our water situation? I mean, grass is low, you know, grass will not go very deep, but then we're spending, you know, we're irrigating grass in these times, and I'm not sure if that's very appealing to the situation either. I'm just looking for input there. Um, I, I think, I, I mean, just for me, um, I, I'm totally sympathetic to the, the plight of the contamination on the site. Um, and, and the problems that that has, uh, I think what I heard from the board primarily was um, to just to take a look at it and, and work with, you know, your landscape architect, if you haven't engaged, you know, or hire one, you know, just for some thoughts, or maybe perhaps some of those green thumbed folks that, that work in the facilities, maybe they have some ideas of what could work. Um, within the confines of obviously something that doesn't require, you know, that, that meets the city's, you know, drought kind of tolerant <laughs> planting concepts and, and, and isn't obtrusive, isn't super costly, um, but just something that's not, uh, you know, 
uh, just bare bare asphalt or concrete or something. I think um, you know the design. There's some design guidelines specifically in the industrial and business parks about providing amenity spaces for employees and things like that. And so maybe that's that's where that creativity comes out, and and you find a way to you know maybe you utilize some drought tolerant plantings that are low and they're engaged in a you know a plaza or some picnic tables uh, or a nice outdoor eating area. I I don't know, um, and I think that's up to you guys to kind of figure out uh, what that might be for you that works with the the business over there that 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 kind of kind of ties all the parts and pieces together. Um, I don't know, Adam. Did you do you have any additional thoughts on that? Kind of what what I think I'm hearing from from you and other members of the board. Yeah, I, I think you're on, you're on the right track, um, Drew. Definitely. Yeah. Um, no, I don't. I, you know, I I didn't mention grass. I don't think anyone else really mentioned grass. It's not something that we um, propose um, really or like to see even. We don't even necessarily like to see swaths of lawn coming before the board. Um, one just in. In, in a design sense, but then also to go with the um, the guidelines that we have for um, water efficiency. <clears throat> um, and I think I think Drew's point um, to thinking about um, your employees um, is is a key one that I've been thinking about this time too. Uh, like knowing that you know these are um, you know they're not thoroughfares that people are driving on to get to and from places. Um, they're not main roads. Um, it is a private. Um, you know, industrial development, but you do have workers. I mean, you, you do have people that work there. The the relief is not necessarily just um, so people can drive by and see pretty buildings and not see something that's real ugly. Um, it's it's really to we you know as a board, the superior design is not just for people looking at buildings, but people that use the buildings, how they fit into the context of the neighborhood, and how they fit into everything. And so you're fitting into that industrial context, and that's where you know we're very sympathetic to utilitarian nature. But you do have this campus, um, and I you know you've got mm, what at least four buildings that I see, um, maybe more as part of your your main campus there. So you have plenty of workers. Um, you have got truck drivers coming in and out that are doing deliveries, dropping things off. Thinking about how you know these are the 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 relief that we're thinking about. And you you know say you're you're driving in and you're going to work and you do that 40 hours a week. Every time you drive in, you see a great concrete wall. You know, as the you know a city body, we would are advocating for everyone to have um, access to good design superior design is not just pretty things it's actual um well thought out um uh, infrastructure it's primarily what we are are tasked with doing as far as i see it and and so um really thinking about um your employees and your um, buildings and this this neighborhood you know when i think about projects you start from what you're you're trying to design for and then you think about moving out from that you think of your site you think of the neighborhood context you think of the city context you know the, the 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 landscaping that we're thinking about might not even you know it's not necessarily swaths of lawn but maybe it's trees and pots to create that plaza that Drew just mentioned um, or to create just a nook where um, the employees can go on their break and also you know you're providing an amenity for your employees but you're also ameliorating the urban heat island effect of a giant flat roof and tons of concrete um, industrial yard there you're providing multiple winds this is where um, you know, uh, bringing in um, designers um, could could really help to just spark things because, you know, these um, we don't want to we're, we're not trying to 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 just um, shut anything down. We're trying to spark that creativity to really spark. Um, these are opportunities. Really, you have opportunities to do something. Maybe these lo long swaths of, of wall could be. Um, uh, you know, you talked about painting all of your buildings. Maybe this is the first stage of painting something with murals or with just a beautiful stripe or a wave or something that you're creating some relief, color, texture. There's idea of, of you know, texture of, of materials. This, this could be the first step to create, you know, a gorgeous industrial site that is a pleasure to come to work at. And, um, you know, they don't, it doesn't have to be terribly expensive too. It can be small, um, small wins. And so, so I encourage find, um, the designers that can really help you think creative, creatively about these things, because um, you know, you 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 the, this basic building that you're bringing, a basic idea, is um, a great uh, canvas for you to work on. Think of it that way. 
is you can have a lot of fun with it and have it, have it also fit, fit all of your needs and desires too so well we do have other locations on this on the campus so maybe what we bring to you is showing you we do have other outside areas and this will most likely be the same employees that will be using this because of the size of this campus we even have them playing disc golf in the back in a planner strip in back we have awesome. outside covered areas we have picnic benches um, so that's in other areas of the site what we'll be developing here will actually be this area that will have the least just because of the layout of the building and the road coming through it will be the least um it will give us the least options to do that but we'll be able to show you the next time we come through where we have picnic areas currently where we you know we have areas where they eat lunch we have covered areas we have uncovered areas like i say they play disc golf in the back yeah um, yeah and we, we're not necessarily saying you need to provide break rooms for the for the you know truck drivers and delivery drivers but you've got a 206 foot long wall with nothing on it right now that's an opportunity right there um with some some interesting architectural feature a swatch, a swatch sure of color so someone will want to do us a mural uh, oh I'd, yeah i bet you'd have no problem finding people to do something do you, then you have to get something that you actually want on the side of your building i was going to say who approves those murals i'm serious cool. that's a question do i do we bring a mural a mural concept to you do you i i think i think um absolutely um yeah. you know so that we've had to you. yeah i mean there is another public art committee um but uh I think from a building perspective, anything that you guys are interested in doing and and want to to do to to kind of amp up, you know, what what it what could be a very simplistic building, uh, I think would would be uh, positively received. Um, so I'm gonna I, I see the architect architecture firm is uh, on the call here. I would. I'm just I'm going to say this again, please read section 3.4 business and light industrial parks and buildings of the city of Santa Rosa design guidelines. If you have trouble finding it, please ask Monet, your project planner, and she will point you in that direction. Um, because I think there there are is a lot of really good information contained within that document. And uh, I, I would encourage you to take a look at it. I think um, you know, many times cities have form-based code or they have uh, other kind of regulations or, or different things that prohibit um, kind of flexibility and creativity. And what's really, really, really nice about the city of Santa Rosa's design guidelines is that it, is it allows the uh, creative teams to flex their muscles a little bit and try to find what works within the confines of the design guidelines but also works for the project, both from a budget standpoint and also from a usability standpoint at the end at the end of the game. And uh, I think that's what's really unique and special about um, our design guidelines as opposed to other places. I've, I've lived places that have form-based code. I've lived places that have really restrictive uh, kind of design guidelines about things. And so I, I think there is flexibility within here to create a beautiful building that's also utilitarian and functional and secure right um and uh we we saw a cannabis project not too too long ago that had some really unique uh aspects to it uh public art uh an interesting interpretation of of kind of their security fencing um and and, and kind of a different engagement of materiality of the building while also being utilitarian functional and secure so i think um you know those are all things that that i would encourage you guys to take a look at uh you know kind of what's what's been here in the past uh, at the city but also the the guidelines as well because they do provide a lot of uh, meat and potatoes uh in terms of kind of what sorts of things uh we might be looking for um, but also i think the city at large even for you know uh industrial parks which you know 
I think we can all acknowledge they're not the most beautiful thing on the planet, but they they do need to not be a a, a public eyesore in many ways. So, anything else from the rest of the board? Cool. Uh, any other thoughts, Katie, from your team at all? I, I did see a hand go up from somebody and then it went down. <laughs> I think that might be somebody from the applicant team. Uh, Troy Leva, is that right, Katie? I'm not sure. Uh, I think China's on the call, but or Dominique is on the call. So, uh, Michelle, let's go ahead and uh, grant Troy the ability to speak, and, and perhaps it's a public comment. If it's public comment, great, we'll take it. Or if he's a member of the Africa team, also cool. I'm not sure that Troy is on the call yet. I think uh, he appears to be. Yet. Yeah, or whoever it is. Anyway, uh, Michelle. Troy, you should have um, the ability to unmute yourself. Okay, it looks like you are unmuted, but we cannot hear you. If you would um, like to call in, I can give you the phone number and the meeting ID, um, and you could call in. And I will look for um, I will look for you. So the phone access is also on the screen. The phone number is 877-853-5257. Meeting ID is 816-1176-1047. Troy just texted me and said he's been listening to the comments and he um thank you for your comments and then we will work on this um i'm assuming on our next um design review you'd like to see maybe an overview of the site that will help you uh see where we already have um areas for our employees and that type of situation uh, yeah, I think that would help. Um, I, I think that would help uh, the board immensely. Um, I, I would work with Monet as well. Um, there are specific requirements for what needs to be submitted for uh, an entitlement package. And so I would work with Monet on what those specific items are, um, site plan, uh, lighting plan. I mean, there's a whole uh, laundry list of things um, that we'd like to see. Uh, if those items are not present, um, that potentially could hang up <clears throat> your entitlement as well. Um, so I would work with uh, the project planner to make sure that you're providing all the documents that are listed and required. Um, and I think, again, a, a campus plan would be helpful for the board uh, to kind of understand what's where. Um, I'm assuming that our um, light plan and everything, you want consistent what our original light plan was on all of the other, we had to do this in the entire development. So they mm -hmm. called out all the specific lights, all of that, which we would be in keeping with the same um, as we've done because of the looms and all of the things that were calculated before, so it doesn't affect neighbors. We're- Absolutely, yep, 100%, yes. 100%. It's, a, it's generally called a photometric study. And if your architect can't help with that, um, they should go hire an electrical engineer. <laughs> I'm kidding. We have um, all that from our original yeah, development. Absolutely. Right? So it all still um, exists. Perfect. Yeah. So that'd be great. Um, so, Monet, you had something? Uh, yes. Would you like to see another concept design review or you want to go straight to the final design review? I feel like a concept design review would be better. But I think what? Sure. I think uh, they'll just... do that and we'll need to get the entire site so they'll be able to get an idea that our employees are accommodated and, um, you know, how things are deal dealt with currently on the site. Well, let me, yeah, I'm just going to take a quick straw poll here. I mean, I, I think you're you're open to an additional concept design, but uh, if, if you guys want to see an additional concept design, just give me a hand raise, please, the rest of the board. All right, so it's it's looking like, most of the board, yeah, everybody's wanting an, a second concept design review. So uh, if you could please work with Monet to get that together, that would really help us out. Um, we will do that. 
Yeah, and uh, like I said, again, we, we want your project to go forward. Uh, we're very pro project as a group. Um, and so uh, I, I think just more information tends to help us out because um, then we can fully understand kind of what what's what's going on on your site, right? What's going on with your building, the surrounding and conditions, et cetera. So. And I think probably all of you are aware we've already done our pre-application. So all the departments have chimed in, you know, fire, everybody's happy with our site from the years since we began its development. That's actually, that's great news. That's also great yeah. news. So yeah. fantastic. Um, so great. So any, uh, so anyway, I'm going to just bring it back to the board here. It sounds like we're coming to the end. Any last thoughts? Uh, if not, we will close uh, item 8.2. Thanks so much, applicant team, uh, for looking at your project. And uh, we'll see you again with a, an additional concept review and hopefully keep you moving uh, in the process here. And with that... Uh, I'd like to move to item nine, which is adjournment, Ooh, and it is 6.30 on the button. So uh, everybody have a great weekend and a uh, great week next week, and we'll see you at the next design review board. Have a good Take one. Take care. Thanks all. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.